Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome to Championship Manager 0304 here on the channel for a very special experiment video. Over the kind of Christmas New Year break when I wasn't recording Football Manager, I was just hanging out with, you know, friends and family and taking a bit of a break from it all. I decided to put this back in. I've had I've still owned this game from when I got it. This is the game that got me in to Championship Manager and Football Manager at the time. A lot of people have 0102 as that game. I also played that, the two season demo you got in the serial, and I think on a box of Cheerios or something. So I did play that, but this was the first full game that I owned of this kind of franchise, and it got me hooked. I loved it and loved it, and I still have it. So what I thought I would do was boot up Championship Manager 03 or 04 again, and I've simulated forward 16 years to 2019, the end of our current season, and we can take a look and see how football looks. Of course, this is all going to be based on what this game thought of certain players and certain teams, the way all the randomness works of management sims that we love to hate so much. We're going to let that run its course. We'll look at, so we have the nations here, I did, this is a slightly altered version of the file. I don't have Scotland in anymore because it was taking way too long and I had too many leagues loaded. So we have England. Germany, Italy, and Spain. We'll take a look at those leagues, see who won those. We'll drop down a little bit, check and see if there's any players still kicking about that we recognize. We'll look at the Champions League, or the Champions Cup, I think it still was, the UEFA Cup, and the European Championship, the World Cup, things like that. So hopefully there'll be some surprises in there for us, some shocks. I'm sure a lot of things will remain the same. But it'll be interesting to see exactly who is where and how football has changed in 16 years according to what our dear friends at SI thought at the time. So strap yourselves in, we are going time traveling. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoyed your 16 year nap just as well as I did because we are now on the 31st of May 2019 and are ready to take a look at how football looks today. Like I said before, we're going to jump into those competitions, see who won them, take a quick look at the history. We'll go through a couple clubs and see if there's any players you recognize or whatever. I highly doubt there will be at this point. Maybe one or two of the youngsters still around, but we are going to take a look and see. We're starting in England. So, drumroll please, the winners of the 2018-19 Premier League are... Manchester United. Manchester United won the Premier League. It's a good guess. They couldn't have known what would happen after Ferguson retired. I haven't looked at any of these yet, by the way. This is all news to me as well. I'll run down the list, see the clubs that are here. Chelsea, Bolton in third place, Newcastle, Manchester City in fifth. Interestingly, because this was long before their big takeover and the money came in. So they've built themselves up au natural, it would seem, which is pretty nice. Liverpool in sixth, Arsenal, Preston, Tottenham, Blackburn, Norwich, Leicester, Derby, Leeds. Nottingham Forest, West Ham, Blackpool, Southampton, Toronto, and Coventry. Blackpool starting Division 3 on this game, I'm pretty sure. So they've had their rise just like they did in real life, except they stayed there, surviving by a couple of points in this season. A lot of the big names that were there or thereabouts at this time are back in the league. Nottingham Forest, Leeds were a big name. They were in the UEFA Cup, I think, the first season of this game. Uh, Derby County are in there. Blackburn, former Premier League champions, are still in there. Preston, interesting name, up in 8th. And then Bolton, of course, in 3rd. Newcastle, 4th. So, definitely some surprises there. Some teams you might have thought would have been in there that aren't. And, you know, some things don't change. Manchester United still topping the table. Chelsea right behind them. But let's take a look at a couple of the clubs and see if there's any players that we kind of know. So, is that Rio Fer... No. Rio Ferdinand still playing age of 40. He is retiring at the end of the season. Look at... Oh my god. Look. <laughs> I can see why. Acceleration 2. Agility 2, Pace 2, Stamina 1, Strength 1. Yeah, it's about time you packed it in, real. That's that's not great, is it? He can stay on his feet. He just can't do anything else. Uh, he's got a 7.0 in the one league game he played, though, so fair play to him for that. Who else is in here? I wonder. James Milner, 33 years old, playing for Manchester United. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. I might have missed a couple of this. So he was... This guy, Yami Pustin, is a youngster at United on this game. He never really took off, I didn't think so. They sold him, then bought him back for some reason, he didn't even play that well. So it's a strange move. They sold him 
Oh no, they sold them here. So it's been a while I thought they sold them that. They sold them way back then. I don't know why they bought them again, but they did. Is that Wayne? Wayne Routledge at Manchester United. Oh my days. He... Yeah, he hasn't done a lot. £450,000 from Dortmund of all teams. So Wayne Routledge. Manchester United bought him in 2009. Loaned him to Liverpool. Sold him to Liverpool, who sold him to Dortmund. And he's back in... What a career. What a career for Wayne Routledge. My goodness. Aaron Lennon at Manchester United. He went from West Ham. He was at the start, I think. I know it was Leeds. Then he went to West Ham on loan, at least for a while, Southampton, but then Chelsea, then Manchester United. Nothing prolific, but some of these guys have some nice careers. Owen oh, Hargreaves, he was not been hit quite as hard by the injury problems like he thought he would be. He starts at Bayern, he went to Newcastle for ten and a half million, Chelsea bought him Manchester United, part exchange, back to Chelsea to Brighton, and then Manchester United again. Sixty thousand pounds for three games, that's not bad. So that's not a Bad. Look, let's see who Chelsea have quickly here. Anyone I recognize? I'm probably missing players. Joe Cole, still at the club. Look at that. Joe Cole through and through. Look at these brains. He must have been one of the best players out there with some of these numbers he's putting up. Nicely done, Mr. Joe Cole. Um, is that Mikel Arteta is. He is in the R Rangers. He's at Rangers on this at the start, yeah. So he made his way around. He played for Inter and Bayern for any up at Chelsea. John Terry still going at 38 years old. Chelsea through and through, never left. Was a rock at the back for them. Look at this. He's still playing a full season at age 38. He's got to be on his way down though with those physicals. He can't be playing for too much longer. Uh, let me see. Liverpool. Chris Kirkland still in goal. Yakubu. Yakubu. Wow, he stayed. Started at Portsmouth. Maybe where Charlton was from Juventus bottom, then Liverpool took him. We had, look at he had a few fantastic seasons at Liverpool, though. Fair play to him. Michael Owen still going at 39. That's the. Uh, wonder how much of that he spent injured, but look at those numbers. He's putting up double digits every year until 2015 without fail. So that's some really nice stuff from him. Uh, who else? Arsenal? They got. Oh, what a tiny squad. Cristiano Ronaldo is at Arsenal at 34 years old. He's been not too bad, has he? He's probably not quite been as prolific as he turned out in real life, but it's a very solid move. He only just signed him, actually, for £7.25 million. So he spent most of his career at Manchester United. They have Landon Donovan, the American, still going 183 caps he's racked up now. It's been a kind of, he's had a big, nice spell there, bought from Leverkusen. He's had a nice little stretch in the early 2010s. Uh, Melito. So it's just definitely... Some players, Tunchai at 37, still going. Wow, Arsenal bought him very early on and kept him. He was a prolific force up front for them as well. Um, that's probably, I don't think I'll recognize much else in the Premier League. There might be other players floating around that we'll miss. But let's have a quick look at the history then of the league, see who's won it. Oh my gosh. So, really, nothing changed between. 1996 and 2019, the Premier League has only been won by Arsenal and Manchester United. How many times did Arsenal win this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Arsenal won it 11 times in a row between 2008 and 2018. That is incredible. 11 straight Premier League titles. They probably have more overall than Manchester United than at this point. United winning just bookending that at 07 in 2019, they finally took the crown, Arsenal finished 7th, that was a big drop from 11 straight wins to a 7th place finish, but my goodness, what a spell of dominance that is by Arsenal, no other names except for Bolton creeping into that top 3 unexpectedly, Blackburn are in there a few times, Newcastle had another 3rd place finish in 05, but nothing too out of the ordinary except for this giant run by Arsenal, that's very impressive indeed. So I'll quickly down the other divisions. First division, so the playoff final still to come. QPR and Sheffield United playing in that. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. This is what I want. There we go. So Cardiff won the first division. Everton getting promoted with the playoff final coming up. And it's North oh, Northwich Victoria are a championship side, which is very cool. Mid-table championship team. So that'll happen on, when you let games like this run for long enough. Team goes to appear out of nowhere. Northwich Fix being that team. Other than that, nothing too massive to show. A lot of teams that have been around the Football League for a long time doing a decent job. 
Cardiff and Everton, of course, during the Premier League. Everton a part of it in the beginning. Cardiff, I don't know if they've made it before. Now there's no real way to tell. Let's see who's been down in the Championship. So Manchester, let's see. We start about here. Yeah, so no, no big names faced relegation. Manchester City went down again at one point, but again, they weren't massive at this point in the game. Blackpool went up in 2016. That's where their promotion campaign happened, and they, as I say, assume been up there ever since, unless they had a playoff and they finished lower down. So that's the championship. What about the, sorry, the first division? Sorry, the second division. Of course, we're in playoff times. Peterborough, Peterborough and Plymouth. Russian and Diamonds in second place. Uh, Kidderminster 12. Hull down in 20. So they were a third division team at the start of this game as well. They didn't have the success Blackpool did. Huddersfield are going to the third division. They finished bottom of the second division. So they're definitely not having that level of success. Wimbledon, of course, the old club. They start this game in massive financial difficulty. So it's kind of a... Not a surprise to see them down here. They're in the first division, but then about two weeks if you start in the game, you get a message saying they're in trouble. They usually get points to actually sell all their best players and all this stuff. So it's not too much surprise. Swansea down in 18th. They start, I think, in the third, the third division too. There's a lot of teams that made a rise over the last, you know, 15, 16 years that you don't really think about. Let's see the third division then quickly. Swindon, Wrexham. Who else do we have in here? Anyone of particular note? That's super low down. Not really. This is a lot more boring. Bournemouth, third division club on this one. So they're not the Premier League high flyers. Watford actually just gained promotion as well. So two current Premier League teams in this universe have been struggling in the bottom tier of the Football League. Watford heading back up. Bournemouth are not. They have another year at least to spend in the third division. Uh, I don't have the conference things. So let's check FA Cup winners. So Manchester United won the FA Cup this year on penalties against Newcastle. Not even far as picked up the trophy in 2017, but apart from that, it's Liverpool snuck in there, Everton. But it's mostly, again, Manchester United and Arsenal that are dominating the trophies. Some runners up Millwall, a notable runner up in there, but apart from that, it's Premier League clubs and teams that are just missing out to the two powerhouses of English football at the time this game came out and continued to be. So you can really, there's not a lot they could have done. The League Cup, Preston picked up the League Cup in 2018, which is nice, Southampton. Middlesbrough, Chelsea, so a little bit more variance in the League Cup. But you still have your usual Arsenal and United winning through there. They probably take up most of the spots. But definitely some other teams in there that you might not expect. One particularly being pressed in there picking up the win. So that's England. We'll run through the others. I probably won't go quite as in-depth. You have Germany, Italy, and Spain to go through. So we'll kind of go through these a little bit. So Germany, Schalke won the league. Dortmund third, Bayern fourth. Let's take a look at the Bayern squad, see their name's line. So Pletikosa, the Croatian goalkeeper, is still going at age 40. He's playing all their games. Agility of 9, so it's not actually that bad. He doesn't, he doesn't need to worry about acceleration of pace. His jumping is a concern. But he still, these stats will keep him going. He still did pretty well. Uh, anybody else in here? That's not any Freitas that we know. I don't think. Martin Di Michaelis at 38, still playing. Not a lot, but he's still, he's still going. So that's Munich. I don't think Dortmund will have much. Kasper Schmeichel, actually, Dortmund goalkeeper. So that's a bit of a surprise. Um, Thomas Rosicki is still going at 38. So injuries didn't hit him. Look at those medals. Wow. 20 anticipation, creativity, decisions, and flair. He's, some players' tentacles don't quite match up, but that's a sight to see. I'm assuming his tentacles are probably dropped just because he's got older as well. It didn't help. Uh, so Schalke won the league. Do they have any old old heads with us? That's Sergio Ramos. The different, an Afghan Sergio Ramos. I doubt that's a regen of the same person. It would be pretty funny if it was. Uh, the Brazilian Diego went to Schalke. This guy was a bit of a wonder kid on this game. You could sign him from Santos. He stayed in Santos for a long time. You could sign him really early on, but he stayed there for a while. Eventually he moved to Hertha for $24.5 million and went to Schalke. I'd usually pick him up when I played this game because he's a very, very good player. And you can get him for a decent price. Was that Mike, 35-year-old Michael Chopra? Part of scored 17 goals in a Bundesliga title-winning campaign at 35. That's something you would not expect to hear today. Um, you run through that. Gregory Vignal is the 37-year-old Frenchman. Philip Lam at Schalke. There's some big names here. Some old names. Obviously, the others we don't recognise being the time that it is. Check the history really quick and see. So Bayern haven't done a lot. So that was the year before. They've only won it four times in the 16 years. There's been a lot more Dortmund wins. So Dortmund really come into their own. They won, what, five straight off the bat. 
alternated with Bayern for a little bit. 1860 Munich won it in 2017, Schalke getting their first victory of the simulation eventually. But there's a lot of Dortmund domination in there. Bayern had they came running up to Dortmund five years in a row before they finally won it, which must have been a big relief for them. Another four runners up in a row here after their previous victory, and they won it again in 2018. So Bayern, although not winning it as much as Dortmund, have been there and thereabouts pretty much all of the time. So their dominance hasn't really dropped. I don't I don't know German football well enough to say Leverkusen though. They just came back up. Werder Bremen, so there are some big teams down here. Leverkusen, Bremen, Frankfurt. Yeah, definitely some teams you'd expect to be in the top tier that aren't. German Cup, any surprise winners here? Freiburg to win FC Bayern A. Is that like the amateur Bayern team? Because Bayern have won it. So does Bayern's like, I think Bayern's reserves or Bayern amateurs won the German Cup in 2014, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, Mainz, Kaiser, Slaughter, there's a few teams winning it that you wouldn't necessarily expect. That one confuses me though. That must be like the reserves, which is just crazy. Absolutely insane. Uh, we'll go to Italy next. The Serie A, ah, so Milan. Serie A champions this campaign, Juventus, Sampdoria, Inter, a lot of teams in there you'd probably expect to see. There's a couple, you know, I don't know if Fiorentina are there, Parma are gone, I don't know if they had real financial trouble in this too. Albino left a team you wouldn't necessarily know, down they got relegated. Uh, let's check some of the teams then, Milan, is that Daniele De Rossi it is, the Roma legend at Milan on this one. Moved to Barcelona very early on and stayed there for the bulk of his career, coming back to Italy just a few years ago. Still a star, Darren Fletcher at 35, playing for Milan. He played a lot of games as well, 7.22 average rating. He still got it at 35 years old. He went to Southampton fairly, fairly early, spent a few more years at United, then moved on. Javier Saviola, the Argentine, he's a prolific man on this game. Barcelona will score, yeah, will score a bunch of goals. He's hit his downturn now, but the very good player, Carlos Tevez, now 35, they brought him in. So he went from Boca to Betis, then to Dortmund and Milan. Uh, Jose Antonio Reyes, another prolific man on the starts at Sevilla. He's a fairly cheap release clause, but he stayed there for a while. Manchester United signed him. Then he went to Inter and off to Barcelona, Napoli, and then to Milan. Arjen Robin in here, he's still at PSV. Had a couple big money moves to Barcelona and then Milan. Johan Giroud, the Arsenal centre back, making his or Arsenal midfielder. I apologise, making his move to Italy as well. But Juventus, Buffon, still going at 41, still dominant. Say that Juventus his entire career. What an incredible player! So you shouldn't be surprised he's still on there. Mikel Silvestre, 41 years old, I think the oldest of our remaining active legends. Played seven games as well with these stats. That's rough. He is dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. But he still caught some game time. John Allen Boomsong. His career took a slightly better turn on this game. It looks like he went to Manchester United, then Juventus, and stayed there for a very long time. Instead of the downward turn his career took in real life. I'm going to come back. This is Adriano. The Adriano it is. Adriano, remember him? If you played uh, Pro Evo 6. Adriano was a legend to you. Just go into Milan and you tear everyone apart. So he's at Parma here, moved to Dortmund, and then £90 million to Juventus. That's a big amount of money on this game. £90 million. He makes the move to Juve. And <laughs> Anthony Vitalik, the Liverpool prodigy, £48.5 million to Juventus. His career took a, and again, took a better turn on this game than it did in reality. Inter, Andres Iniesta playing for Inter. Made the move from Barcelona to Chelsea on loan and then eventually permanently before making his way to Italy. Um, is that Gianpaolo Pazzini? It is. He starts at Atalanta. He just went to Inter for £5 million. Pounds. He had a good career. Surprised he didn't make a move sooner with those stats. Is that Jonathan Spector? <laughs> 122 cats. Manchester United man went to Chelsea before going to Inter and staying there again having a surprisingly good career. You can see the kind of players that were rated highly by this game and how it just doesn't, didn't quite work out. Uh, Roma, I don't know if they'll have much in terms of players. Is that Obafemi Martins? I think it is the Nigerian, yeah. 
starts to enter absolutely. Domingos Duarte, they don't Diego Duarte is the wrong player. Should have known that. Um, yeah, let's take a quick look then at the Serie B. So Parma coming back up with Barry. Looks like this isn't quite over yet. There's one more game to go in this league. But some recognizable names in here I'm playing Kievo, Cagliari, things like that. We'll check the history of Serie A and see who's picked up the win. So Milan, Napoli, Juventus, Roma, Inter. No big surprises in there. Not really even the top three. Bologna picked up a third place in there. But Sampdoria this year. But really, fairly standard in Serie A for the time. Juventus getting a few wins in there. They're really a powerhouse in this game. But Milan have kind of kept control for the most part. We'll jump to our final league then. So Spesso. Oh, this one's a surprise. In 2019, Zerez, Jerez, however you want to say it, have won La Liga. So that is quite something. I don't think I recognize any of these players, which might be why they've managed to win it, because they don't have real old players still in their team. So Jerez won the league. Sociedad second, Betis Deportivo, Real Madrid in fifth, the first of the big boys, and Barcelona down in seventh place. I thought Real Madrid aren't in here. They get relegated? They're in their soul. Spain has gone mad. So Jerez won the league. Real Madrid. Let's see if they still have any old guys hanging around. Is that Martin? No, I said youth. I should have seen that coming. Uh, I don't. Casillas is still there, but he doesn't look like he's the main man. Maybe he is. So they have Casillas. Barcelona. Are right, Puyol. Carlos Puyol still there? Not really playing a ton. Lucio at 41 years old is still playing. He's going to Frankfurt, so he's not even retiring. He's still going. Lucio, he joined. So Newcastle signed him in Barcelona, brought him in from Newcastle. He's an outstanding player on this game when he's not this old. Samuel Eto at 38 with his one acceleration, two pace. Sure, that's going to go well for him. Uh, Rafael Marquez. At 40, joining Atletico Madrid. Where are Atletico Madrid? I'll come back to this. So Atletico Madrid just got promoted back in. They finished third in the second division this year. Which is crazy. Bill Bauer down there in Tanthers, Zaragoza. So a lot of teams that are top tier clubs just weren't there. This, uh, where did I see? This Nastic team. Oh, it's Gymnastic. Okay, that makes more sense. I know who they are. Um, so apart from it's not, it's not too bad, but Jerez winning the league that's kind of crazy. What's the history? Have they won it before? Or are they like well, okay? So, this Jerez team are not one season wonders. So, Barcelona won off the bat, Valencia, Barcelona, Barcelona, then Jerez won it in 2009. They've won it four times in 2009, 2011, 2014, and then 2019. They've been runners up another four times. So, I don't know where they came from. If they were they backed by money or the I don't know where to tell. Awful facilities. Worldwide reputation finance is okay. So no, there's nothing that special. They just come out of absolutely nowhere, seemingly. I won at Deportivo, were a big team at this time as well. But their big guys will be long gone. Guys like Valeron and Roy Mackay, people like that. That's interesting. That is very interesting. Let's quickly take a look at the Spanish Cup, see if there was any shocks in there. Because the way things are going, it wouldn't surprise me. Deborah 2 Mallorca, so Jerez have won that as well. Spanish Cup's been a bit more tame, no completely unknown teams coming in. But this this club here, Jerez, have kind of taken over Spanish football in a big way, which is kind of nice to see a new face in there. All right, done that. We're going to quickly then take a look at some international things. So, first, the Champions League. L so Litex of Bulgaria have just beat Leon in the Champions League final in a 1-0. That's kind of crazy. Who's who's won the competition? So we start about here. So Manchester United won the first one, then Chelsea, Milan, Barcelona, Dortmund, Milan, and it was at 1860. Munich picking up their first title. Arsenal won it twice. Newcastle picked up the win. Dortmund, Milan, and then Litex of Bulgaria just won the Champions League with Leon in second place. Alaves were runners up one year, Stuttgart were runners up. So there's been Blackburn runners up in 2012. So there's some teams that are sneaking in there you wouldn't expect. Deportivo in 07. That's kind of crazy. The Tex, the Champions League winners, my goodness. It took me a second to pick up on who they were. I think I've heard of them, but that's insane. Wow. Um, let's kind of check the UEFA Cup then while we're here. 
Deportivo just won the UEFA Cup over Sporting. Andalite have won that. Manchester United, Blackburn, Roma was the crack off. Polish side have won it. Blackburn picked up the win there. Liverpool, Arsenal, some of the bigger teams that have dropped down. Uh, Sporting with runners up. Besiktas, Southampton, Liera, got Portugal, Red Star, Club Bruges out of Belgium, the Germans, Kaiserslautern, in the first year run, runners up to Liverpool. So definitely some teams doing a lot better. I can't quite go over the Tex and Jerez and what they've done. That's kind of crazy. But that's the nature of these kind of simulations. You just don't know exactly what is going to happen. Uh, I think we're in internationals. So I want to check out the European Championships, the World Cups, and then we'll check out the rankings. So European Championships, let's check. There's only been a few of them. So Ireland actually won Euro 2004, which is kind of crazy. So Ireland won Euro 2004 against Holland. Then France won it in 08, Holland runners up again. England won it in 2012. Wales, look at that, England won it in 2012. Wales were the runners up, and the hosts, that was hosts, that was third place. Hosts were Scotland, but England beat Wales in the final in 2012. Turkey winning against Denmark, the hosts, in 2016. So a couple surprise winners in there. Ireland and Turkey for sure. England, France, you imagine could win it. So that's less surprising. Uh, I want... The World Cup now, or do no? We'll come. We'll do World Cup. So the World Cup then. Holders Germany. So they won the last one. So winners there have been for Spain, England, Spain, Germany. So nothing too exciting there. Germany beat Brazil in the last final. Spain against Holland. England against the Ivory Coast. And Spain against France. Australia over third place in 2018 was hosted by Mexico, not Russia. And like you saw there, Sweden. I think Norway were hosting 2022 instead of Qatar. This game made a better decision. Canada hosted it in 2010 when England won the World Cup once again. So there you go, that's when the drought ended in this reality. So then kind of a quick look at the rankings of the finish. Also Brazil are top, Spain, Morocco third place, Ghana fourth, Germany, United States, Saudi Arabia 11th in the world, Iraq, Qatar, a lot of these clubs are coming in here. Saudi Arabia 11th, Iraq 13th, Qatar 14th, and going for Uzbekistan are 18th. So there's a lot of teams just popping up from out of nowhere around at 29th. Uh, China at 36, so they're making a more of a rise in this than they are. I realize Zimbabwe, Scotland at 45. Greece, France are 56th. So they've definitely fallen off the face of the earth a little bit. North Korea at 67, Panama 66. Republic of Ireland, the European Championship winners a long time back in 76 now. I want to see if there's any other big surprises in here. Doesn't look like too much more. India 133. San Marino 155. So they're not bottom. They've made their way up a little bit. They're not the worst ever anymore. The bottom falls to the Wallace and Futuna Islands. So some things don't really change, and that's one of them. But a lot of pushing from clubs, or clubs, countries. In the Eastern Hemisphere, I suppose you could call it. Some big major changes in the way the rankings look today. So that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed that look in the future. Let me know if you like the idea. If there's anything else you want to see on this file, let me know if you want me to you want to use this file for whatever reason on the game. But if you have the game, let me know and I will get it to you. If you want to see some other games do this on simulation, I'm happy to do this on any other game I have or can get my hands on. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit that like button if you like the video as well. And feel free to subscribe for more football management based content. And thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next time.